Today I am making a vegan turkey roast. This is sure to be a fantastic turkey roast that will get you wanting to make this in the comfort of your own home to really bring your friends and family together and give them a great surprise for any occasion. These first ingredients is for a wet liquid in order to make the turkey. The first thing that I'm going to do is add all of the wet ingredients to a food processor and let that blend really well until the liquid is super smooth and really a thick liquid. And then we have the dried ingredients. The wet and dry ingredients are going to be infused together to make a seitan meat. Next up is mixing the dry ingredients together. We want all of the powders to mix fully so that way you're not getting a, a bite of garlic powder later on when this is finished cooking. You wanna make sure that all of the flavors are enveloped together. Now that the dry ingredients are together, I'm going to go ahead and pour in the liquid ingredients and mix that up. Now, I'm gonna mix it up as much as I can with my spatula, just so that way there's not as much, uh, you know, dough and mixture sticking to my fingers. Then, it's time to get in there, knead up the dough the rest of the way to get all of the ingredients liquid and dry, completely combined together, get those flavors infusing together, and that's gonna start making a dough. When you have your dough together, you wanna knead the dough, and this is where it's very impactful because if you knead it too little, then you're not gonna activate the vital wheat gluten, uh, in which case you're gonna be left with a soft, turkey and that's not what we want uh, it's gonna be kind of like uh, tofu right that kind of soft uh, jiggliness of tofu if you need it too much too long too hard then it's going to activate it too much and it's going to make the fibers very tight and it's going to make your turkey too tight of a meat you want to have that right balance now that we have the dough ready let's go ahead and add it to some aluminum foil and we're gonna really kind of stretch out the dough, uh, wrap it up really well in the aluminum foil and get it in the oven to bake. I'm using a Breville air fryer oven and so I'm going to cook it 350 degrees for one hour on my bake setting. While that's cooking in the oven, uh, we need to start preparing for the second step in this process, which is creating a, a cooking stock. Now, you can go to the store and you can buy some vegetable stock and, and cook this right in there, or you can make a stock from scratch and cook it in the stock as the stock is starting to uh, develop those flavors, or you can kind of do a combination of both, which is what I did. Go ahead and get those, those great ingredients together to make that stock. So we have some celery. All I'm doing is I'm cutting off both ends of the celery and then chopping that up. As I'm using this stock to turn into a soup, there's a little secret for you. Uh, I still wanna make sure that I follow through with the, with the right chopping process for a soup. 
Now, if you're not making a soup and you're just making it into a stock, just cut it however you want because it's just a matter of cutting it, getting in the pot, letting it cook to bring in those flavors. Then we're gonna move on to some carrots. And so the carrots, chopping off both ends, peeling the carrots, uh, and then again, chopping up those carrots to be soup style. Moving on to the onions, I'm cutting off both ends, removing the membranes, uh, removing the skin, and then just slicing up that onion into some decent size uh, bites, you know, spoon size where it's not gonna be too much and like a mouthful of onion, um, and then just putting that aside. Now let's move on to the garlic. And so the garlic, I wanna remove the skin, I wanna remove the ends. Simple way to do that, take the flat part of your knife and just smash it down real quick. And that's going to loosen up the skin around it. When you cut off the ends, it's gonna make the skin just fall right off. But also you're gonna have this, this smashed garlic a little bit where when you just give it a quick slice, it's going to really infuse nicely into the stock. So that's gonna be fantastic. And then we have the other ingredients. Uh, we're just gonna bring it all together in a pot. We're gonna ha add about half water, half vegetable stock. It's gonna really bring out a lot of flavor, really bring that to life. So now our roast is done baking. And so the key to this is that you want to make sure that the roast is really for the most part, it's, it's completely cooked. If it's not completely cooked, you're, you're going to be dropping in a ball of dough into water. So it's going to boil. It's going to make like a soggy biscuit. And that's not what we're going for. If if it's too hard, if, it's, if you baked it too long, it's already going to be dry and so it's again, it's going to soak up that liquid and it's just going to make it a mix between sogginess and then also um, hard meatiness inside. So if you make sure that it's cooked for about that hour, uh, you're going to have that, that fully cooked meat and when you drop it in to the hot stock, uh, it's going to cook properly to where it's just infusing flavor and locking those flavors in. The key with the cooking here is that you want to make sure that your liquid is between 195 and 205 degrees. So now we're going to go ahead and cook that for an hour. If you need a thermometer to get it in there and keep it at that magical temperature, then, then that's what you do. All right, so we have the turkey. So let's go ahead, remove it from the stock. That's all done. We're gonna put the stock aside. We're gonna use it for soup later. Okay, so we're moving on to the third part in this, and that is going to be preparing some ingredients for sauteing and browning up our turkey. So let's go ahead and prepare those ingredients. Now let's take the turkey and brown it off. Uh, that's going to create a nice uh, golden brown skin on the outside that is reminiscent of enjoying a turkey roast. So let's get those ingredients in that saute pan, get it hot, and cook off ourselves some turkey. Alright, so you see here we're just sauteing that turkey, hitting all, all the sides on this. Yeah, it's, it's a sphere, right? So it's going to be difficult to cook all the sides perfectly. Just do the best you can. Uh, really get those flavors all over this turkey, get it nice and crisp and browned. Secret number two in this recipe is making some gravy. And that can be done so simple with some of that leftover stock and making a quick roux, bringing that together. Now you have a great gravy to go with your turkey roast. You can see our turkey is done. I'm gonna slice it up, drizzle some gravy over the top, and plate it up and enjoy a few pieces of this turkey.
All right, so what do I think of this turkey? Well, first let's let's get the negative out of the way, right? So I don't love how long it takes to make this. Now, you know, it's not really a big deal because when you make a turkey roast, a non-vegan, a meat turkey roast, it takes several hours of cooking. So in that regard, it's really it's really not a big deal. But there's some other vegan meats that I have made that have been prepared and cooked much faster. This takes an hour baking, it takes an hour uh, boiling, and then you have to brown and saute it. That takes, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so. So it takes a bit of time. Uh, so you just have to make sure that you have that available when it comes to making this. Now, what I liked, the first thing that I will mention is the outer part, right? The skin of this. And so I really liked the portion of cooking it off and, and, and sauteing it because that gave that crispiness that you'll get from that kind of skin from a turkey. There's other ways where you can heighten that, that skin effect, but that's not what this video is about. That's, that's another thing, another time. But it was great flavor and, and it just, it went really well and accented it. The next thing that I like about this turkey was the inner, right? The meat, the white meat, the light meat. The, you know, some turkeys have, have dark meat and light. This, of course, only has light meat. That's that's okay. But I like that the inside was moist. It wasn't chewy, uh, but it wasn't too soft. So the texture was pretty good. Um, I definitely liked the texture. I think that overall, when you combine both elements of this roast, it, it was a successful turkey roast. Um, so this is something that I enjoyed and I will certainly uh, have again. And so I definitely recommend it for you. I will certainly use this recipe again and kind of infuse things a little bit differently and get creative in different ways to, to bring out more and different recipes, other ideas that I have going on in my mind. Um, you know, so I'm looking forward to, to using this again and really kind of playing around with that. So this was a great recipe. It tasted fantastic. Uh, it was very easy to eat. Um, I cut up a few pieces and enjoyed that. I did notice that when I put it in the fridge overnight after having a few slices, it did cool obviously in the fridge, but that tightened up some of that gluten. So the meat, when you had it hot the first time, was a little bit softer, a little bit moist, more moist. But when it cooled and then reheated, it tightened up that vital wheat gluten a little bit. So it made the meat a little bit tougher, but not tough in a bad way where, you know, it's that, that dry piece of meat. Toughened in a good way where you're left with um, a really nice slice of turkey. So this was very enjoyable. Like I said, I'll have it again. And I look forward to sharing some more great recipes uh, with you as I'm your friend with food benefits. And I have lots of great things coming your way. And I will see you again real soon.